Hello, hello, welcome. Welcome to week two recap of our Bible in a Year challenge. My name is Sandra. I'm going to be your host for today. Welcome. Welcome to week two recap, day eight to day 14 of our Bible in a Year challenge, January 8th to January 14th, 2024. We are committed to reading our Bibles and fellowshipping with God's Word daily. Please kindly go ahead right now, subscribe to my YouTube channel, follow me on Facebook, on Instagram, and on TikTok at Sandra Boyo Aroleba. Let's get started. Day 8 of 365, Monday 8th, January 2024, we read on Genesis 17, which focuses on God's covenant with Abraham, the change of his name, and the establishment of circumcision as a sign of the covenant. Then we moved on to Genesis 18, which recounts the visitation of divine beings to Abraham and Sarah, the promise of a son, and Abraham's intercession for the people of Sodom and Gomorrah. In the New Testament, we read from Matthew 6, 25 to 34, which teaches about not worrying, but trusting in God's provision and seeking his kingdom. We then read Matthew 7, 1 to 23, which contains teachings on judgment, prayer, the narrow path, false prophets, and doing God's will. We finally read from Proverbs 1, 8 to 19, which emphasizes the importance of heeding parental wisdom and avoiding the enticements of sinners. On day 9 of our 365 Days Bible in a Year Challenge, Tuesday 9th of January 2024, from the New Testament we read Genesis 19, which recounts the destruction of Sodom and Gomorrah, Lot's escape and the transformation of Lot's wife into a pillar of salt. Genesis 21 to 18 told us a story of Abraham and Sarah's sojourn in Gerar, where Abraham presented Sarah as his sister, leading to God's intervention and reconciliation with King Abimelech. We read from Matthew 7 24 to 29 which concludes Jesus' Sermon on the Mount with the parable of the wise and foolish builders, emphasizing the importance of hearing and obeying his teachings. We moved on to reading from Matthew 8, 1-22, which includes accounts of Jesus' healings, calming a storm, casting out demons, and his call to discipleship with a warning about the cost of following him. Finally, on that day, we read from Psalm 7, verse 1 to 9, which is a prayer for God's protection and justice, seeking deliverance from false accusers and expressing trust in God as a refuge and righteous judge. On day 10 of our 365 Days Bible in a Year Challenge, which was Wednesday, 10th of January, 2024, we started with Genesis 21, which highlights the miraculous birth of Isaac and the parting of ways with Hagar and Ishmael. We moved on to Genesis 22, which portrays Abraham's faith tested by God's command to offer Isaac as a sacrifice and God's provision of a substitute. Then Genesis 23 records the death of Sarah and Abraham's purchase of a burial plot in Canaan. We moved on to the New Testament. We started with Matthew 8, 23 to 34, which includes Jesus calming a storm, delivering two demon-possessed men, and his departure from a region where he is not welcomed. Then Matthew 9, 1 to 13 features the healing and calling of a paralytic, the calling of Matthew, and Jesus' association with tax collectors and sinners, emphasizing his mission to call sinners to repentance. Finally, we read from Psalm 7, verse 10 to 17, which contains a prayer for just God's justice, recognition of God as a righteous judge, and praising God for his righteousness. 
On the 11 of our 365 Days Bible in a Year Challenge, that is Thursday, 11th January 2024, we began with Genesis 24, verse 1 to 67, which narrates the journey of Abraham's servant to find a wife for Isaac, highlighting God's guidance in the process and the union of Isaac and Rebekah. From the New Testament, we read from Matthew 9, 14 to 38, which includes discussions about fasting, Jesus' authority over illness and death, and the need for workers in the spiritual harvest. Finally, we read from Psalm 8, verse 1 to 9, which is a song of praise and wonder at God's creation and his special care for humanity, emphasizing the majesty and glory of God. On day 12, that is Friday 12th, January 2024, we began with Genesis 25, which focuses on the birth of Jacob and Esau and the transfer of the birthright from Esau to Jacob. We moved on to Genesis 26, which narrates Isaac and Rebekah's experience in Gerar during a famine, highlighting God's blessings and the covenant with Abimelech. From the New Testament, we read from Matthew 10, 1 to 31, which records Jesus' commissioning of the 12 disciples, instructing them about their mission and the challenges they will face, emphasizing trust in God. Finally, we read from Proverbs 1, 20 to 33, which portrays wisdom as a person calling out for people to listen and choose understanding over fully, warning of the consequences of rejecting wisdom. On the 13th, that is Saturday 13th of January 2024, we began with Genesis 27, which tells the story of Jacob's deception in obtaining his father's blessing intended for Esau. We moved on to Genesis 28, verse 1 to 22, which recounts Jacob's dream of a ladder to heaven, God's reaffirmation of the covenant, and Jacob's journey to Haran. From the New Testament, we started with Matthew 10, 32 to 42, which emphasizes the importance of openly confessing Jesus, receiving and assisting his disciples, and the rewards for those who do so. We moved on to Matthew 11, 1 to 15, which addresses John the Baptist's question about Jesus' identity, with Jesus affirming his messiahship and honoring John's role as a messenger. Finally, we read from Psalm 9, verse 1 to 6, which expresses gratitude and praise to God for his mighty deeds and protection while reflecting on the fate of the wicked. Finally, on the 14th, that is Sunday, 14th of January 2024, which is today, we read on Genesis 29 and 30, which describes Jacob's arrival in Haran, his love for Rachel, and the complex family dynamics within his household, highlighting the themes of love, rivalry, and God's providence. From the New Testament, we read from Matthew 11, 16 to 30, which reflects on the rejection of Jesus' and John the Baptist's messages, inviting the burdened to find rest in Christ and emphasizing the importance of humility and learning from him. We finally read from Psalm 9, verse 7 to 12, which praises God for his righteous judgment, sovereignty, and protection of the oppressed, calling on him to bring judgment upon the nations. So our summary of week two, during week two of our Bible in a Year challenge, we explored various passages from the Old Testament, the New Testament, Psalms, and Proverbs. Here is a summary of the key themes and lessons learned from each section. In the Old Testament, we read from Genesis 17 to Genesis 30 throughout this week. These chapters focused on the covenant God made with Abraham, the birth of Isaac, the destruction of Sodom and Gomorrah, Abraham's journey to Gerar, the birth of Jacob and Esau, Jacob's marriages, and the birth of his children. 
and the intricate family dynamics within Jacob's household. These stories emphasize themes of faith, God's providence, family relationships, and the fulfillment of God's promises. In the New Testament, this week we read from Matthew 6, 25 to Matthew eleven thirty. These chapters contained teachings from Jesus, including the Sermon on the Mount, where Jesus addressed various topics such as worry, prayer, judgment, and discipleship. He emphasized the importance of seeking God's kingdom and righteousness and invited those burdened to find rest in him. Jesus highlighted humility and learning from him as key lessons. Finally, from the Psalms and Proverbs this week, we explored Proverbs 1, 8 to 33 and Psalm 7, verse 1 to Psalm 9, verse 12. Proverbs emphasized the value of wisdom, heeding parental advice and the consequences of rejecting wisdom. The Psalms included prayers for God's protection, justice and praise for his righteous judgment. In summary, this week too provided a rich tapestry of biblical narratives, teachings and wisdom literature. We learned about God's faithfulness to his covenant, the importance of seeking God's judgment, the value of wisdom and the significance of trusting in Jesus for rest and salvation. Hallelujah. Amen. Please, if you've been blessed by the scriptures and you would like to make Jesus your personal Lord and Savior, kindly repeat this prayer after me, believing in your heart every single word you say. Lord Jesus, I confess my sins and I ask for your forgiveness. Please come into my heart as my Lord and Savior. Take complete control of my life and help me to walk in your footsteps daily by the power of the Holy Spirit. Thank you, Lord, for saving me and for answering my prayer. In Jesus' name, amen. Congratulations. If you said this prayer, we are so excited to welcome you to God's family. Kindly go ahead right now. Send us an email. Let us know you give your heart to Christ. Someone is going to reach out to you and pray with you and help you in your new walk of faith. The email address is salvationinchrist101 at gmail.com. That is salvationinchrist101 at gmail.com. God bless you. Please, if you haven't yet done so, kindly join us this year in the Bible in a Year Challenge 2024. We're rounding up with week two today. Tomorrow we start week three. Please kindly join us and you will be glad you did so. I post every day on all my social media platforms. Please follow me on my Facebook page, on Instagram, on TikTok and on YouTube at Sandra Boyo Areleba. Let us form a community of commitment Thank you so much for being here again today. It's always a pleasure having you here. I look forward to another amazing week with you this week. Have a blessed day and a blessed week ahead. I love you. Bye.